I have an older sister who, when we were kids, used to pull the uh, age rank card on myself and my brother to gain control of the TV remote. This meant that we spent a significant portion of our childhood watching uh, programming targeted towards young girls. And most of the time, yes, it was just as awful as you might imagine it would be. But in addition to the metaphorical colonoscopy that is TR Live with Carson Daly, she also spent a fair amount of time watching the magic girl classic Sailor Moon. A show that taught me two things. One, girls can really, really kick some ass. And two, censoring lesbianism by rewriting a pair of lovers as cousins only makes things awkward as hell. This marked the beginning of my appreciation for the Magic Girl story archetype, and I've had a fondness for it ever since. So when I was researching games to review for the channel and I stumbled across Blue Reflection, an original IP about Magic Girls, I got a little excited. And then when I saw it was a turn-based JRPG, I windmill slammed 6,000 yen onto the table. Our story centers around our young heroine, Hinako, your stuck, self-doubting, every female anime protagonist. When we first meet Hinako, she's having a particularly melancholy trudge to school, her first day back since having seriously injured her leg. One would imagine that this might be a happy occasion. However, Hinako had been training since childhood to become a world-class ballet dancer and was something of a prodigy. But now, even after rehabilitation, it's believed she'll likely never dance again. Shortly after arriving at school, we are cornered by an innocent enough looking girl in glasses. She's an acquaintance from middle school, and though she and Hinako were never close friends, she confesses her admiration for Hinako's mad ballet skills and how happy she is that they're attending the same school again. So happy. Really uncomfortably happy. Before she has time to cop a steamy, hormone-driven feel, we are suddenly and presumably magically transported to a strange, vibrant world. Not uh, sure what painkillers they have this poor girl on, but I am certain that she won't need a part-time job if she sells a quarter of her prescription in the girl's bathroom each month. Examining her surroundings, Hinoko tries to determine whether or not this is, in fact, the real life or if it's just fantasy when... Oh no. Is, is that an enemy? Shit, I think it sees us. Oh, here comes the attack. Wait. No. After pulling herself out of the river, she- whoa, 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 wait a minute. Can I see her bra through her soaking wet shirt? Was this entire first enemy encounter orchestrated in such a way that the game could show off an underage girl's lacy unmentionables? Anyway, as Hinoko contemplates her mortality, wondering whether or not she's gonna make it out of this place alive, she's set upon by a pair of disembodied voices. They tell Hinoko that she is a particular brand of magic girl called a reflector, and within that power lies the strength to fight. After a bit of heavy exposition, we accept the power of the reflector and are treated to the entire reason I picked this game up. Magic Girl Transformation. Jesus Heloise Christ, it is everything I ever wanted. The inexplicable nakedness, the extravagance of each costume piece reveal, the over-the-top jiggling, R really, it's it's magical. Oh, and what a costume as well, the, the tutu, the sexy but not too sexy choker and garter set, a sword we have no realistic hope of wielding, the random blondness, and the cherry on top? We have a single blue eye now, so it looks like we're in a constant state of having just gotten sassy with Chris Brown. Speaking of living in constant agony, as long as she's in her reflector form, Hinoko does not feel the pain of her injury and can run, jump, and dance freely. Stacked with her new duds, she backtracks to that off-brand Digimon that shoved her in the river to compare swords. It's the uh, tutorial, so let's just say ours is bigger. Either because she took down the enemy or because the Vicodin wore off, she is sent back to our world still in the middle of the same uncomfortable conversation with Glasses Girl. 
who now seems more mentally even, but only slightly less molesty. Having safely dodged that bullet, we head to class where we meet the pair of voices who guided Hinako through her prescription strength painkiller fueled trip to Wonderland, the sisters Yuzu and Raimu. The two of them reveal that, of course, they're reflectors as well, and that they need Hinako's help to protect the Earth from otherworldly threats. While there's a ton of sweet, sweet magic girl action to be had here, the overwhelming majority of the story consists of you and your friends helping various girls through the school deal with the hardships of life and grow from their experiences. The struggles range from just approaching someone's crush all the way to confronting one's verbally abusive father. Most of these stories are pretty interesting, however, they all seem to be resolved rather quickly. Sure, we can probably hash out how a tennis girl should approach a guy who's probably already into her in just an afternoon because one, she's a hot ass tennis player who's got a pair of thighs I would let crush my head open like a watermelon, and two, she never wears anything but mini skirts that really lay bare said tasty gams leading to any heterosexual male in line of sight to bust out their proverbial forks and knives. So yeah, the afternoon will do. But helping someone get over their crushing fear of their oppressive father and guide them to pursuing their dreams of becoming a journalist may not be a task that can be settled over the weekend. If slice of life is a genre of anime you enjoy, it is pretty safe to assume you are going to like Blue Reflection's story. The magic girl aspect seems to be more of a backdrop for Hinako's personal growth and the bond she forms with her fellow classmates. Yeah, bonds, that's uh, that's what we'll call it. Just your everyday female bonding experiences. Nothing fruity at all here. One of the first things I noticed about Blue Reflection is the fact that it seems to take a lot of inspiration from the Persona series. Your high school student tasked with combating a mysterious force using your newly acquired magic powers who grow stronger by forging friendships and through academic and physical achievement. That's all well and good on the surface. I mean, if you're going to imitate someone's style, you might as well pull from the best. But that also leads to having constant comparisons drawn between you and said source of inspiration. And let me tell you, if Persona is the stick with which you want to be measured, you'd better either stack up or prepare to get beaten with it. Now, with that in mind, let's start measuring. As in Persona, our time is spent in two locations, our world and the other world referred to as Komon. In the real world, we spend our days faffing about the school, dicking around on our phone, and engaging in so much girly talk. I mean, I was kind of expecting this, but I assumed that it was largely going to be glossed over, making room for more important moments that might give the story a little, uh, a little push. It was about the time I had to sit through a, and I wish I was exaggerating, 10 minute incredibly detailed conversation about cosmetics and what type of makeup would best suit Hinako's complexion when I realized I would receive no such mercy. Quick sidebar, realized I never actually covered what it is you do in Komon. I wrote and recorded the entire review and only just now realized. So uh, here it is. You wander around Komon, systematically staunching the life out of any enemy you find until you find the correct one, and it drops a shard, a magical MacGuffin that is either the source or the solution to a girl's problem, I was never clear on which, and that's it. You go back to the real world, the girl's problem is solved, and you can see why I forgot. Now might be as good a time as any to point out that there is an atmosphere of a deep-seated lesbianism in this school. Not that this is a negative thing, just making an observation here. At first I thought it was just a few cheeky ladies here and there, like this one creeping on her senpai with a camera, getting all flustered about how cute she'd be looking, but damn, nearly every one of these girls is out there hustling like every day is Taco Tuesday. In between, and sometimes during, our unsolicited flirtation, we receive experience yielding side missions from established lady friends, as well as meet new girls, building relationships with them, and driving forward the plot. Once a new friendship is cultivated, that friend will be able to assist you in combat in a number of ways, but we'll get to that in a moment. You spend a sizable amount of time going on outings, or dates, with the multitude of lady friends you make throughout the game, each time furthering your relationship with them. While some dates have a little more to offer than others, it's largely just your typical high school girl conversation about shopping, makeup, karaoke, or in one case, and one case only, boys. Everybody else seems to be a little more preoccupied with Hinako. 
Uh-oh. Glasses Girl just took you purse shopping, girl, because she wants you to have nice, pretty things. Time to face the facts, Hinako. You've got a girlfriend. God, the size of the lady boner that Glasses Girl has for Hinako would give even the most seasoned Futanari artist a hand cramp. We're also given time at home each evening to prepare for the coming school day through doing activities such as studying, bathing, and stretching. Each option yields different results. For example, studying in bed will help you focus in class the next morning, and you may receive a permanent boost to your max MP. Taking a bath will lead you to wonder if they took the time to render nipples on these character models, and doing a little stretching will HOT! Damn, Hinako's a bendy girl. No wonder she's got so many lady callers. Those horny little scamps are flicking through the old LL Bean, fantasizing about nodding her up like a pretzel. Uh, so, yeah, so... <laughs> So, stretching will lead to a playful water fight in the pool, gaining you a boost in agility, attack, or HP. Blue Reflection's battle system is easily my favorite part of the game. On the surface, it's your standard active time, turn-based goodness. However, instead of everyone's time being tracked independently of one another, all participants are represented on a timeline at the top of the screen. This lets you clearly see whose turn it will be next and makes it easy to prioritize targets. Your team can get offensive with a variety of different attack types, many of which can knock back the targeted enemy on the timeline to varying degrees. I found juggling opponents and maximizing the number of turns my team got before receiving an attack to be very rewarding. It's almost a shame the combat's so fun because there is no reason to do it any more than is absolutely necessary. Your party games points for stat allocation and level ups through completing missions, not through combat. This leaves the battle results screen looking a little, uh, vacant, reporting only dropped items. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the way Blue Reflection stages character growth, I just don't feel very rewarded for skillfully taking down my enemies. My only other real critique of the combat is that it is not particularly challenging. This is largely due to the fact that your HP and MP fully recover after each fight, so there's a little need to closely manage your resources. I can appreciate that the game has respect for your time and doesn't feel the need to pad itself out with lengthy random battles, but the game would have benefited from more challenging encounters, to be sure. While your party of three never actually expands beyond Hinako, Yuzu, and Raimu, your new lady friends impart to you kind of uh, perks that can be assigned to individual abilities of your party members. These perks are absolutely worth your time and interest as they can really beef up your party's potency in battle. Offering such simple bonuses as recovering HP when you use the paired skill, or boosting the strength of an attack in exchange for putting you further back on the timeline. In addition to this, your lady friends do make actual appearances in combat when fighting the purebred bosses that occasionally invade the real world. This is the only time they ever really directly assist you in combat. Their skills are free and come in a variety of different buffs and attacks. However, I am not entirely convinced that an amateur pirouette performed in running shoes is going to help anyone recover a meaningful amount of MP. Looking at Blue Reflection in terms of both gameplay and story, I would say that this Maho Shoujo's game content is comprised of about one-third Maho and two-thirds Shoujo. One-third fending off the forces of evil, two-thirds fending off sexual advances. I, uh, might be in the minority here, but that seems like a pretty decent gameplay split to me. Blue Reflection is mostly a pretty game. I found myself really enjoying the art direction, the character designs, and the clean, stylish UI. I'm a huge fan of the color palette on display here as well. The soft pinks, purples, and blues really convey the kind of whimsical, melancholy tone of the game. If I had to paint a word picture, I would say Blue Reflection looks how it feels when you wake up from a nap in the twilight of the afternoon during summer. That warm, drowsy, and just slightly out of focus sensation we all pass through as we gradually slip back into consciousness. However, that sensation of warm-hearted nostalgia for simpler times when you could sleep during the day is lost immediately when we witness the fact that Blue Reflection can hold a steady frame rate about as well as Michael J. Fox and hold all these lines. Doc, come on, man! I believe it was less than 10 minutes into my first playthrough when I noticed my first frame drops. It wasn't even a particularly busy sequence, just a regular dialogue exchange between characters and my less than 5 month old PlayStation 4 Slim couldn't hold it together. Additionally, there's also a number of janky, stiff, or overly recycled animations. Several of the special attacks tend to stutter or spaz out in the same place each time they're performed. 
Another example is when you just put away your phone and it's like Hinako's model gets spawned back in and her rack goes fucking ballistic. And there's this one particular animation of a character dramatically putting their hand in front of their face in shock that is recycled over and over and over again. The school itself is surprisingly well detailed. While not particularly large, it is surprisingly deep in the fact that you can explore each and every one of its rooms. The classrooms in particular seem to be brimming with little details that make them feel truly inhabited. Small things like a skew or hastily reorganized desks and the like really add a layer of authenticity. These environments possess a strong attention to detail I wish was present in other aspects of the game. As for Komon, the environments we have to explore leave a bit to be desired. There are four different, visually distinct, and admittedly pretty areas. Each area is divided into zones that are small in addition to being not particularly fun to explore. There's also a sense of disjointedness as the zones don't really connect to one another. I mean, they have exits and entrances that shuttle you between them, but it's like teleporting to a random area, no sense of progression through the level. Each zone has the lasting impression of a randomly generated dungeon floor, except without having the excuse of being randomly generated. It takes a special kind of bland level design to have your work compared to something a cold, unfeeling machine could crap out in 10 seconds. The dynamic camera angles we get in combat are beautifully executed and add to why I enjoy the enemy encounters so much. However, everywhere else the camera sucks ass. In Komon in particular, the camera seems to always be getting caught on something or scraping against an invisible ceiling. In the real world, things are not much better. The camera is normally in a fixed position. However, instead of finely crafted cinematic angles that give me all the information I need, I found myself hindered, unable to locate objectives or people hidden just out of frame. Not gonna lie to you, I spent a good 30 minutes hunting this chick here down. Visited my tennis lady like five times and never even caught a glimpse of her, and she's basically on fire. So as far as the score is concerned, how do, how do I put this? I can safely say the music seemed to blend in nicely with each situation and was generally inoffensive. In fact, it blended in so well that, as I sit here writing this review, I can't even remember it. I'm certainly not saying the music is bad. If it were, at least I'd be able to come up with something funny to say about it. But I can't recall a single tune, melody, or anything memorable about the score, and I was streaming it just a few hours ago. For God's sake, it's a JRPG and I can't even hum the battle theme for you. I haven't played Final Fantasy VII in five years, and I could probably jot down a basic arrangement of its battle theme from memory on the back of a Starbucks napkin! As for the sound design... Ugh... Blue Reflection is making it very difficult to speak well of it. The game is quiet, not in a suspenseful way, in a ride to hell retribution kind of way. Awkward. Only the main story and cutscenes are voice acted, which is pretty unsatisfactory for such a short game. Additionally, I can think of plenty of times where we had what I felt was supposed to be a dramatic pause or sequence, but there was an absence of music or background ambiance of any kind. The entire thing reeks of time and or budget constraints. I can see past most of Blue Reflection's shortcomings because it is genuinely a fun game. However, there is one aspect of this game's presentation that they f***ed up, and they f***ed up bad. On days it's raining, the raindrop pattern on the school windows is identically repeated on each and every window, not once, but twice! Not only could they not find the time to create more than one raindrop pattern, or at least stagger the timing on the existing pattern, but they didn't even create one large enough to cover an entire f***ing window! The pattern is just repeated halfway through! Sure, we can see through a rain-soaked blouse, but the goddamn rain that bought you a ticket to that particular show can't get the gratitude of an artful f***ing representation! Now, you may be thinking, Caleb, that's a lot of harsh scrutiny for something as inconsequential as a raindrop pattern. Why are you being such a douche? My channel is literally called Rainfall Review. If I don't take a stand for this, I'm interneting wrong. So in the end guys, Blue Reflection is not a perfect game, 
not even close. Like I said, it's wrought with stiff or buggy animations, missing sound effects, and an eerily forgettable soundtrack. And additionally, it's not even particularly long or difficult. The entire thing can be wrapped up in only about 30 hours. However, all that being said, I really did enjoy the game from start to finish. The compelling characters, the lovely art direction, and the general tone of the game just really resonated with me. And it leaves me wanting to recommend Blue Reflection to you guys, but it is certainly not worthy of a, a golden recommendation. Thus, I've created a new mm, tier for these sort of diamond in the rough kind of situations. Uh, so I give Blue Reflection a rating of Oshi, which roughly translates to a, uh, ooh, so close. Thank you for checking out my review, Blue Reflection, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I just want to take a moment right now to thank my first three $20 Patreon supporters. We've got Benjamin Montmoreau, Tyler Rosardo, and Sean Van Pelt. Thank you so much, guys. I cannot, I cannot understand, like, what this kind of support for my channel means. I appreciate you guys, and I'm happy that that anyone feels like uh, supporting my work in any way, so that's great. Uh, if you're watching this right now and you would like to support the channel, maybe have your name featured in the end card here, go ahead and check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Um, if not, there like there's totally no obligation. Please just if you watch my content and like it enough to share with someone, like that's more than enough. That makes me happy right there, and you're really helping me out. Um, but yeah, that's everything. So if you want to go ahead and check out some of my previous reviews, uh, we've got a review of uh, Dead or Alive Extreme 3, as well as Persona 5 that are pretty recent you can check out. If you want to see more of my content, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, in the meantime, I guess we're done here.